How much time does it take to make a decision? A second ago, you're in peace. After that, war. The Battle of Gettysburg by Enea Heli. In November 1860, American voters chose the 16th President of the United States. To most people, slavery was the most important issue of the day. Southern states allowed slavery, while northern states didn't. Americans had sharply different views on slavery. However, Lincoln defeated the other men to win the presidency. Southern states feared that Lincoln would try to end slavery, so they took drastic measures. To protect their right to slavery, seven states soon seceded from the Union. They formed the Confederate States of America. Confederate leaders told Lincoln to remove U.S. troops from the South, but President Lincoln refused. On April 12, 1861, Confederate forces attacked U.S. Fort Sumter in South Carolina. Soon after the attack, four more states joined the Confederacy. The Confederate victory was the first battle of the Civil War. But President Lincoln had a quick response. Most Southerners supported the war. Some of their troops have been training for months. On the other side, people didn't want the war. Still, many men volunteered quickly. After the smashing victory over the army of the Potomac at Charlottesville, General Robert Lee met with Confederate President Jefferson Davis. Brimming with confidence, Lee decided to go on the offensive line and invade the North for a second time. In addition to bringing the conflict out of Virginia and diverting northern troops from Vicksburg, where the Confederates were under siege, Lee hoped to gain recognition of the Confederacy by Britain and France and strengthen the cause of the northern Copperheads, who favored peace instead. On the Union side, President Abraham Lincoln had lost confidence in the army of the Potomac commander, Joseph Hooker who seemed reluctant to comfort Lee's army after the defeat at Charlottesville. On June 28, Lincoln named Major General George Gordon Meade to succeed Hooker. Meade immediately ordered the pursuit of Lee's army of 75,000, which by then had crossed the Potomac River into Maryland and marched into southern Pennsylvania. By June 26, the first Confederate troops reached Gettysburg, and two days later, the Union cavalry arrived. Enemy troops had spotted the scouts, so General Buford expected the rebels to march into town the next day. The next morning, the first rebels marched on Gettysburg. Heavy fighting broke out at McFederson Ridge. The Battle of Gettysburg had begun. Buford's men held off the rebels until more Union troops arrived. One group of Union soldiers surrounded the Confederate forces by a nearby railroad cut, but the Confederates quickly brought in more men. The Union forces were outnumbered by then. The next morning, the two sides prepared for battle. Union General Secrets led troops on the left flank, just south of the high ground. Confederate troops overtook Union forces at a rocky spot called Devil's Den. Confederates tried to take the key position on Little Round Top, but Union troops got there first. The Union men dropped off the rebels and saved Little Round Top for the north. The next day fighting began before sunrise. Union artillery fired on southern forces. More Union reinforcements came and saved the day. The Union had won. It was said that after each battle you could walk in that field and never touch the ground. His hopes for a victorious invasion of the North dashed. We waited for a Union counterattack on July 4th, but it never came. That night in heavy rain the Confederate General withdrew his 
decimated the army towards Virginia. Through the cautions, Meade would be criticized for not pursuing the enemy after Gettysburg. The battle was a crushing defeat for the Confederacy. Union casualties in the battle numbered 23,000, while the Confederates had lost some 28,000 men, more than a third of Lee's army. The North rejoined, while the South mowered its hopes for foreign recognition of the Confederate race. In November 1863, President Abraham Lincoln delivered his famous speech, the Gettysburg Address. At the dedication of the National Cemetery at Gettysburg, equality transforming the Union cause into a struggle for liberty and equality. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who gave their lives that that nation might live. It is for altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But in the larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here have consecrated it far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us the living, rather to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they fought here, have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these honored dead we take for which they gave the last full measure of devotion, that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain that this nation shall have a new birth of freedom, and that the government of the people, by the people, and for the people shall not perish from the earth. Although the high caste of the people, slavery became extinct once and for all. And for this reason, America is the most desirable country in the world.